just a quick for everybody who's tuning in for the for just the moment or those of you just joining us on YouTube. Toby Spearhawk is a Clash Royale pro, uh, a lot of, one of the most respected, very talented player. Didn't get to see him in CRL season one because of some challenges and issues that came up. But I guess before we get into the deck stuff, uh, how's it looking seeing you for CRL season two? I definitely will play CRL season two. I got definitely some requests, like almost from every region, like from CLU, CLNA, CLR. So I even got like a CL China offer, but CL China, I think, already started or is starting in some days. So I couldn't do it. Okay. Because of visa stuff. And so, but I definitely will play CL for sure. Is there any team in particular that you would like to be on? I know you can't say if you've signed anything, but any team where you like, I would love to be with mashed up with these guys. Yeah, for sure. So like definitely like some really, really good teams. But yeah, I think it's pretty obvious. But I think like for sure like Team Queso. Okay. It's like very good. Um, I think I don't get on the team. I'm pretty sure because they are trying to get like mostly or only Spanish players. But yeah, if like Team Queso is watching and wants to pick me up. I would definitely open for it. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely got like some pretty good offers. I'm just talking like with three, four teams right now to deciding to what team I'm going. Okay. So yeah. Well, and yeah. a lot of great teams out of uh, out of EU, of course. And take a look yeah, at your badges here like... for a second. 20 win challenge winner. Uh, arena f finish at right. number 441. That's uh, my second account, by the way, just saying. Oh, this is your <laughs> no flex. This is your second, th yeah. N not a strange flex, this is your second account, so not even uh, the true... Yeah, my main account is in the same clan. Just look in for the clan if you want to see it. It's not much better, just a little bit. Okay. Well, um, we're about to uh, jump in. Uh, am I going to cast yeah, CRL season 2? I just want to say, I mentioned only like Team Kills, but like for example, there are many good NA teams too. I think like Tribe Gaming is very doing very good right now too. Yeah, Tribe. I mean, Tribe is doing That's great. To say that, yeah, they've been fantastic. Like in, a... Yeah, they put like a lot of stuff in, in for off season and in Battleground Weekly. They are pretty serious always. They're definitely trying to win and show what they're made of. And yeah, doing the practice very seriously and it definitely pays off. Heck yeah, it does. Well, uh, we're about to get into non-meta Monday, and yeah, you know, you answered my, my request for a non-meta deck in the global tournament. So, guys, yeah. let's go ahead and reveal the deck. And there you have it in the bottom uh, bottom right corner of your screen. It's <laughs> this one's this one's interesting, man. So, you know, whenever you want to jump in, if you want to tell us a bit about the deck, uh, I, I'm pretty excited yeah, to see how this is going to work. Yeah, we definitely explain it a bit. In my opinion, it's definitely off meta for sure. But this deck was like in a meta, like when I kill was pretty broken, just not with Snowball, because I think Snowball wasn't even out and Barbs was pretty bad at that time. But now with Snowball, it's very good against Loon and Hawk and Inferno Dragon to reset it and Barbarians got buffed. And heal is only one elixir, very good for cycle and you just can heal like Barbs or Musketeers or Minhawk a little bit. So I think it's definitely a solid deck, and with double elixir, I believe like three musketeers could be playable and pretty good. And many people playing like beatdown decks, but variants minion horde and three mask are pretty solid against beatdown, and you can punish with battle ram minion horde and sun heal perhaps. So I think it's definitely a solid deck. Do you like? I mean, people think three musketeers is dead. Do you like this right now, particularly because it's the lava hound meta? I would say I. I wanted to play like a really off meta deck. That's one reason I play Free Musketeers right now. Sure. And secondly, I think like Free Musketeers are viable like in double elixir or triple elixir challenges, in my opinion. Oh, it's a, it is a double extra challenge. Cool. Well, let's go yes, ahead and jump uh, in, oh, dude. I want yeah, to see say, what you do. In normal elixir, Free Musketeers are very bad. I think they need a buff or something else. Okay. But I'm in game now. Let's see. Yeah, it's a, it's a, we're in a double elixir challenge. So we're on the global, the global tournament right now. And, uh, first of all, where are you at right now in terms of wins in the global tournament? Um, I just choose an account with zero wins. So I have zero wins, no wins right now. Oh, you probably can't watch the first game. Oh, you can because you have me as a friend. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm playing my first game right now, so... Yeah, no, I have you up right now, and we saw you opened up with three Musketeers in the back, and something you wouldn't do, obviously, in a single Elixir. Yeah. But with double Elixir, you're not worried about that. Yes. I will wait a little bit, and kite for Packer, hopefully. Yes, we'll play... What? Okay. Oh, lost the Pekka there, because the, you know, the, the Ram speeded up a little bit. Yep. So, I mean, you do have two nice ways to kite the P.E.K.K.A. We saw that. You picking it up with the Ice Golem yes. in the second. Um, you know, we're most of the way through this, and looks like this guy's kind of going a little bit outside of the meta as well. Anything you see in his deck that particularly seems frustrating for this matchup? Yep. But I think it's looking pretty good right now. I have a very good Elixir lead. So interesting, you know, we're, we're also in, you know, the, the meta is half Lava Hound, half Fireball Bait, and you're running a no big spell deck. Yeah, but I, yeah, but I have heal, so. But you have heal, fair enough. Yeah. So, I mean, and what I is your, like are, you, too. Yeah. are you mostly going to be using the heal to to keep your 3M up, the, the, the two musketeers that split, or what's your plan? Um, with the heal? I think the best is like with Minion Horde. Minion Horde heal is very strong, and like Barbarians. Because the three masks are only like three troops, you know, and Barbarians are five, and Minion Horde is six. So it makes definitely a little bit more sense. Let's see what he does. Okay, okay. So that was a, a lot of fire. I mean, there's so much fireball bait here between the 3M and the uh, yes. the minion yes, horde yes. and the barbarians. Yep. And he can't punish your pumps. And here in double elixir challenge, I mean, you've got just had three down. So uh, this kind of puts him yes. in a lot of trouble. For sure. So... You, you've played this deck a little bit before, right? This isn't just your first time. You didn't bust it out for me, specifically. Um, this deck? No, but not going to brag about it. I was very good at one time, and I was, like, top five Three Musketeers player. I was, like, very, very good with Three Musketeers. Hey, if, you, if, if you're as good as you say, you're not bragging, you know? Y yeah, yeah, but... Yeah, I, I know, but some people always say you are bragging when you say you are good, yeah. But, yeah, I, I'm just honest. I was, like, at one time very good with Free Musketeers. Sadly, as I already said, Free Musketeers in competitive or, like, on ladder are very bad. Hopefully, they get changed. Let's see. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, are there any matchups that you're cons you're inherently concerned about with this deck? Yeah, I saw, like, some people playing, like, Arrows, Fireball, Lightning or something. If, like somebody has Arrows and Fireball and perhaps then like Bar Barrel or Snowball, it could get like really tricky. So yeah. definitely some bad matchups. So it has like many spells, I would say, are bad. All right, so here we are and it's Lava Clone um, with Witch, yep. interestingly enough. And your Snowball not in cycle yet, yes. I'm guessing. Yep. Ooh. And Loon, wow. But uh, but I think he overextended, yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. I hope he only has like clone and one spell, one small spell and no big spell. Okay, we play like three mask one lane now because I think he doesn't have fireball. And you can just really chop down. So this is where it gets annoying, though, is because every time you drop those 3M, yeah. he's going to have that clone ready. Oh, yeah. Double Witch is pretty broken. So are we going to see a connection there? And the it just barely gets off, but now you're in the right-hand lane. So you're coming down with a lot on both sides, and he doesn't have much. And here's where that heal... You talked about the heal on the, uh, the minion horde. And that was it yeah. right there. That was beautiful. But it's still looking not too good because the witch survives at one, one HP, okay? So, okay, okay. Um, if you get that right hand tower down, how do you feel about being uh, King Tower for King Tower against this deck? Mm, pretty even, in my opinion. 
Not too good, but not too bad. All right, so this push doesn't get through. He gets a couple shots on that left-hand tower, but uh, looks like you came out on top. Now, you're not yeah. pumping at all at this stage. Is that just because you're worried about playing defense? Yes. If I pump right now, I think he just goes Lava, Loon, and I need to pressure a little bit for sure. Okay, so here come in the bats. And I like that move there, the snowball first to push the balloon back and then the bats inside to pick it up. Yep. You know, it's not something people would think about necessarily off the off the gate. You know, they're thinking the snowball trying to get value uh, targeting troops, but you're purely mo yep. using it there for the pushback. Yep. Okay, I think I should have won now. Oh, this please. is beautiful. Wow. Yeah, the good thing is wow. he couldn't stop like too much because didn't have like a big spell, I think, so yeah. Yeah, no he big just, spell. That was a big problem. Yeah, in my opinion, he just got like pretty lucky not gonna lie at the start because I had no snowball in cycle. Yeah. That was gorgeous. I mean that that, I mean, that was the big question is how spell. do you do with lava clone? Yeah, he not even had a spell uh, to target hoops. He only had clone and rage. So Wow, okay. That was pretty that was pretty fun to watch. Yeah. And so this is the nice part where you're you're not too far into the uh, into the global tournament where it's impossible to find a matchup. Yeah, like if you get like if you're in the top fifty, it definitely takes a long time, and you are getting sniped. So if I get like, I don't think I will get top fifty or close to it, but if so, I probably will get some snipers. All right, so almost assuredly two point six. Oh, um, interesting. Almost. <laughs> Interesting here. I'm wondering if this is a person who like likes the idea of 2.6, but doesn't like the idea of having uh, to play against tanks. I think it's... Oh, okay. What did you think it was until you saw the hog? What again? You thought it was um, something other than the hog? Yes. Uh, I, I thought he's playing Shine Quick Cycle. So that's a very good free to play ladder deck. Like a giant big cycle deck. Giant okay, so I look at this yeah. guy's deck, and what I see is a guy who wants to play hog cycle, but wants, but he's super afraid of tanks. That's what. Okay. <laughs> right, because he's got yeah, the, the mini agree. Pekka and the Inferno Tower. Yeah, for sure. This guy's been this guy's been beaten by lava and golem one too many times. <laughs> So interesting, um, you know, I see going with the the, bar the Barbarians a little early on. Uh, what's your plan for... Oh, here was, we'll see right now. Oh, so that was a big mistake by him. Oh, yeah, him fire. he took the fireball bait on the pump. Yep. And now do you have a heal on top of all this? Yep. Okay, that's just really nasty. Yep. That's really yep. nasty. Yep. <laughs> yep. Now I will play like a minion hot high to predict his. Okay, no, yeah, yeah, GG. Nice. I wanted to predict his hog and he bought two field prediction. But that's a good fireball, but he missed the battle run. Yeah, this is great. And so you can see, yeah. I mean, this what I what I like this for people who are watching uh, on Twitch and YouTube right now is, you know, this this is this deck is kind of silly, although it has its value in double elixir. But People are really going to see it, see a chance of just little mistakes and overcommitments. Um, yeah, for sure. And in particular, it was that fireball on the uh, on the pump that really opened up all of that. Um, now so let's pretend yep. that you're him. First of all, you probably wouldn't be running this deck in the first place. Um, yes. Which, although yes. it might be a little more viable in double elixir with it being a little heavier than it is in in a regular a regular game. Um, but with that fireball, how do you how do you prevent like when you're making so you're playing fireball against this deck, where do you put your fireballs? Well, wow, that's a pretty hard question. Definitely in like double elixir. Yeah. Um, I prob he definitely overcommitted. His problem was, in my opinion, you definitely can fireball for pump in this matchup, but you can't go like hawk and fireball at the same time. You know what I mean. Oh, you interesting. Fireball, okay. You can play like first play a hawk, 
and send Firewall for Palm because for sure I'm going to defend like with Barbs or Minion Horde. And then you don't have like um he definitely overcommitted and he has no Firewall, so he has no elixir to defend. So first he should, in my opinion, he should Firewall for Pump, don't go with Hawk, or if he goes with Hawk, save up for Fireball to get like a nice prediction off. Or don't even use Fireball and use like Fireball for three Musketeers or for the next pump and defend like with Musketeer, Ice Golem, Ice Spirit or something. Okay. Yeah. Well, he didn't do that. So now it's, that's three quick wins in a row. Yeah. Okay, next opponent. Let's see. Let's see what he's got. Bruce from... Uh... Rip Harambe. All right. Yes. Okay, I play Snowball to cycle to my pump. And yeah, double... Oh. There's so many plays you can make in double elixir that you can't make... Yes. Yes, for sure. Okay, he has Rocket, Goblin Gang, probably Lockbait. Yeah, probably Lockbait. Probably. So does seeing that rocket change how you plan, like where and how you plan on playing those three musketeers? Um, yes, yes, for sure. I love that when the uh, the the oh, bounce with the battle ram. Bug. Yeah, that's a problem. Yep. A little unfortunate well, with, the, with the Pekka there. And for mini Pekka, OMG. So he's it's playing. Not- He's playing yep. log bait double Pekka. Right. <laughs> yes. Log bait double Pekka. Okay. And arrows. And arrows. And so, yeah, and so you were talking about that this was kind of the nightmare scenario was someone's running All double right. spell with arrows. Yeah. <laughs> and like mini Pekka, to be honest, because mini Pekka is so good. OMG. Wow. Okay, I need to snowball set. So that Pekka's wow. not going to get there on the right-hand side. Probably the mini Pekka not yeah. either. Of course, now, yeah. because of the snowball bait, uh, or because because of the log bait, but in this case, snowball bait, he's got that right-hand tower down. This is kind of a nasty matchup for you. Yep. I'm not sure. I think it's not looking good. It's looking very bad. Whoa. Perhaps I can predict his Pekka right here. That was nice. I mean, you said you, you literally as you said it. It's what happened. So that yeah, worked but, out well. But still, oh, I do nothing. I think I lost. To be honest, it happens, I man. I, I do it fairly frequently. <laughs> yeah, but at free wins, that's not sure what to say. <laughs> well, Didn't you are playing a ridiculous off meta deck. Yeah, still. I thought, like, at least I get, like, 10 wins without a lose, but it's fine. It happens. Okay, Zepeka was bad, but probably he can just, like, Tesla mini Pekka. Hmm. Oh, if, if that Ram had escaped, that could have been getting yeah, back in the game. Yeah, GG's. GG's to him. Overall, he played pretty good, but, yeah, I couldn't do much. I think even if you play, like, perfectly, if I had a good start and played almost perfectly... I couldn't, I would have lost. Yeah, chat just said sniped by Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a, a, a snipe at three wins. That's what That's <laughs> what I've always predicted. Yeah, let's see. Oh no, I, I think that's a slatter deck. He has rocket maxed, he has scorpion barrel maxed, <laughs> Pekka, mini Pekka's maxed. I think that's a slatter deck. <laughs> oh. What's up, Rich? Tilted Eddie, what's happening, man? How are you? Uh, we're on, for those of you who are just joining in, tuning in right now, we are recording right now with Toby Spearhawk, who's, uh, showing off this ridiculous deck in the bottom right corner, the 3M Heal Fireball Bait deck. Yep. And just went up against a hard counter, uh, essentially got, got accidentally sniped early on (laughs) in the global tournament. I'm pretty sure it's not a snipe, but... That's why I said accidental snipe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, gee, well. Let's see what this next one can do. This is a fun. This is a fun yeah. deck, though. I lo- like. What are the things that you enjoy about playing this deck? 
to be honest, I like heel. I, um, you know, like uh, XOP Sam. Yeah. I p practice um, pretty often with him, and we have like a similar play style. So he likes heel. I like heel. You know. He likes Royal Hawks. I like Royal Hawks. I like Barpart. We yeah, have, like I mean, a pretty similar. That's why I, I nicknamed him the Mad people. Scientist during, during season one. Yeah, yeah, kind of. He was pulling out heel and mirror and all this stuff that, honestly, that we've seen more lately. This is an interesting thing, question about sort of where the meta's at right now. Because it seems like there's more weird stuff happening in the meta in the last, like, yes, three yes, months than there's ever happened. Like, many weird stuff for sure. It has, like, many different reasons. Like, some people just, like, really decks from, like, all the metas and still play them. And some are getting really good now for example like heal was already solid before it got buffed and now heal got buffed so yeah yeah it's so interesting so many people still hate heal but you know we're seeing some of the value here i i remember actually uh talking about op sam when during crl season one uh i went to a local clash night here in la and yep. didn't know what was happening but all of tsm showed up to the local clash night uh and of course all four of them made it into the top eight for the bracket and the finals ended up being op sam against blaze the uh wow, nice. who was kind of like still on his upward rise early early on and kind of making the name he's been making for himself so far and i bet sam three packs of clash royale uh, trading cards to get him to run a troll deck against uh against Blaze in the finals. Blaze beat him. Uh, Sam ended up running 3M heel. Blaze ended up getting the win, but it was a, it was still a close one. But I'll, I definitely okay, respect okay. Sam for being... He's just kind of... He's up for anything when it comes to decks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know it. I know it. But I think, like, even... Like, Freemus, um, like, heel is not even a troll card or wasn't even a troll card. It just wasn't good, but if you ban, like, Poison or, like, with the right matchup, you dominate your opponent. Yeah, ba I mean, that's a big question is bans. Like, bans change everything. Yes. Yes, for sure. So, so I noticed that you're going split lane pressure a lot more. You know, you haven't been splitting barbs very much beforehand, and now you are. Is it because there's so much splash damage? That's why you're splitting them? Yes. Not gonna lie. I'm not sure, not sure what to do. He has Iceless, he has Wizard, he has all what he needs. He has Tesla against Battle Ram. What the fuck? He has back, Baby Dragon. Back to back counters for sure. Yeah. Let's see. It's definitely not over yet. I think he doesn't have like a win condition. Really weird. And my dog, the mail must have just arrived because my dog just went insane outside. Uh, I'll answer chat questions as soon as we're done here, guys. So those of you who are asking questions uh, in the chat, I'll get to them in a little bit. Just stick around. You can just ask uh, after the match. If you want. I can what? You can just uh, ask the question oh, yeah, um, when yeah. I'm done playing, you know? Exactly. Okay, okay. To be honest, I think I need to draw this matchup. I think it's not winnable. Just so, to play like... two minutes left. And two minutes left, you gotta assume that unless you can bait the poisons out to opposite sides, he can probably get enough poisons down on the tower to take it. Yep. Oh, but could we get... Uh, on yes, the... Zap. Okay, that zap okay. mixed with the ice uh, with the ice whiz. Yep. Okay, so now we're actually fairly fairly close here in the last ninety seconds. I'm gonna let Toby just kind of focus while I cast here for a moment. Yep. And here you see he's he's forcing the poison to split sides. So, and he's also getting some damage. So even if Toby can't pull the win out here, it's not impossible that a draw could come out. The big question is how to deal with this push on the right hand side. So snowballs it back. Ice Golem to pick up the Wiz. And he's actually in a pretty good spot here. A very healthy 3M. Uh, two on the left-hand side. Going to go into a Wizard, which would do a lot of damage there and take him off the board. But a minute left 
if he can handle this wizard, he's making it very difficult for David to get poisons around enough. And maybe David isn't being aggressive enough with the poisons. Maybe he can't be because of the dual lane pressure. But with 48 seconds left, um, it's gonna be a, it would be a lot for David to pull out that left-hand side. And he has to be very <coughs> careful here because Toby Spearhawk, not only is he good at this game, but uh, he's got a couple Musketeers coming down on opposite sides. The Wizard does not pitch up that final Musketeer, so will Toby just go all in hard? And he does. Heal goes down. Will the Minions make the tower? The Ice Wiz picks them up, so not going to get any damage there. But now he's going hard on the right-hand side. Tesla picks up the Battle Ram. 20 seconds left. It looks like Toby is going to survive a very, very difficult matchup. Uh, not going to pick up the win here, but not going to pick up a loss either. So... Uh, you know, I, I think we can go ahead and congratulate you here at this stage on oh. on not going down. <laughs> yeah, the good thing is he had like a pretty hard counter to me, but he didn't have a win condition. And there you, you go. Know? No, yeah, no win condition. That's a a very nice draw. So let's go to the chat oh. here for a oh, second. Oh, he had battle ram, but battle ram isn't the best, and he only played it one time. He had wizard, ice Wiz, baby dragon, Tesla. Set poison. Well, yeah, hard for you to get through, but you played well against it. Um, uh, Grandpa <laughs> Ivy in the chat saying Bruce just finished one in five. I think that I think that might have been um, uh, a little bit of shade there thrown from the chat. Uh, Tilted Eddie strong, saying uh... Tilted Eddie saying the meta seems healthy. To be honest, adversity usually indicates that there are a few cards they may need a bit of a tone down though. Um, you, what do you think about that? Do you think that the meta is pretty healthy right now? Yeah, to be honest, I really like the meta, and I'm really excited to play as a season, for sure. And I would say, there are definitely like some cards, in my opinion, definitely like Royal Giant is too strong. Yeah, Royal Giant is a little strong, although I honestly like this Royal Giant better than the previous Royal Giant. Yeah, in my opinion, I like, I love playing Royal Giant, I'm very good with it too, so... But I think it definitely needs like a little nerf. Not much, perhaps like, if, let's see, just nerf a little bit and see how it is. I don't want Reef your card dead again. Just like perhaps like 2-3% um, less damage and see how it goes. And I think like Ram Rider is pretty strong. Overall, the whole archetype like Lava Hound, Lava Hound spam with Lumberjack. In my opinion, is too strong too. So like many different variants, but the most uh, popular one is like Lava Hound, Baby Dragon, Mega Minion, Flying Machine, um, Lumberjack, Poison, Barber, and Tombstone. So okay. is so strong too. Well, let's see if we can get one more win out of this out of this silly deck. Yeah, for sure. You are definitely training for season two, man. <laughs> oh yeah, hundred percent. Um, people are asking if I'm going to cast CRL Season 2. Uh, you can't announce it, right? No comment. People asking if Christy's in a, um, Christy St. John is going to be in CRL Season 2. Uh, I have no idea. I have not spoken to Christy in a little while. Okay, he's playing very aggressive, to be honest. What, you mean spamming all your cards at the bridge isn't normal? <laughs> For sure it's normal. For sure it's normal, man. Oh, that's, that's a beautiful a pickup OMG. there. OMG! <laughs> what a pro player. Wow. Wow. Okay, yeah, no, like, the, the minor freeze play on the... Uh, and now I think, it, yeah, we can see he just gave up here. He's just, he, he knows he just got out. owned really bad. Oh, no, he's still playing. Wolverine, right. thank you very much for the follow. Um, Nepiba as well, thank you for the follow. Um, I thought he'd given up when I, when he saw you. <laughs> no, he didn't have el Elixir. These people never give up. <laughs> they These people never, give, never up. give up. <laughs> um, that might be, I mean, first of all, great pick up there at the Ice Golem on his, on his minor. And then way to deal with the freeze coming behind it, man. I thought that freeze meant it was all over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee. I think he's playing his ladder deck too. <laughs> Yeah, I think we saw some ladder decks. Um, well, you know, we can finish on that one, or if you want to go one more, we can go one more. It's really up to you right now. I will go as far as you want. Let, let's keep it going. Yeah, let's go Let's go another, man. That God, that was really, really funny. <laughs> yeah. There are just moments where you see someone make plays, and you're like, look, I'm not good at this game. <laughs> but there are things that even I know don't make sense. 
All right, so opening hog. Uh, hog bomber. Okay, so, you know, it is officially non-meta Monday when we are seeing hog bomber. Yeah, for sure. Split Bavarians. Let's go. So he does... Now, this is interesting, though, because he does have quite a bit of splash damage um, between <coughs> the, the bomber... And the uh, the baby dragon, does that concern you at all? Mm, in my opinion, bomber, not too much. Baby dragon, yes. Um, okay. Good defense by him. Well played. And so that's going to be frustrating for him because every single time he's going to try to throw that bomber behind that hog uh, and you're just going to defend with that minion horde every time. Yep. I played for a heal a little bit too early. Bad mistake for me. Okay, now I will split my musketeers. Okay, nice. I have two pumps. And he hasn't seen a musketeer yet, so that's going to be interesting to see how he deals with this. Yeah, for sure. All right. Santiago, yeah. thank you very much for the follow, man. Appreciate it. All right, so trying to keep these muskies up against that mini P.E.K.K.A. And one does stay pretty healthy, so he gets some good damage on the right-hand side there. Um, and that's all the damage yeah. on both sides, so very well played. <clears throat> now he's going in hard, though, with the hog. And this now, so now you have to play the barbarians in the center. I like that oh, going the opposite cool. lane, though. A um, little late on the snowball, but those barbarians will get some damage. No. Okay, so even with the mistakes he's making, the over-aggression... Um, he's doing pretty well here with the defense. Yep. Uh, Davey, we're watching Toby Spirit Hawk, Clash Royale Pro, um, signed to CLG last season, although wasn't able to get across the pond, but expecting to see some big things from, you know, a lot of people, including, uh, your, your CLG teammates, say that they really feel like the season would have been diff like drastically different had you been able to make it. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so too, but saying that, that's a little bit, like, selfish? No, not true, I don't want really to brag or, or something. You, well, you I mean, know what I mean? You don't have to say it, but um, Skills and Geo and Backstab were all saying that they felt like, and that's a nice, that's a very, very solid win there. They yeah. were all saying that, they feel like it would have been a very different season had you uh, had you been there, and you know, given the wins you're getting with this deck. So right now, what are we? What are we? Five one and one? Is that what's happening? Yeah, five one. Yeah, five one one one. Yeah, yeah. I would say for sure. In still, if I would perform not not too good, I'm pretty sure we could have won like at least like one or two more games. Sure, which would have been enough to be in playoffs. That would be enough in to be in playoffs. Yeah, that would be enough to be in playoffs. That's right. And even if you get like in playoffs, in my opinion, you definitely perform pretty solid for season. Yeah. In my opinion, every yeah. team score should be to get at least in playoffs and do good in playoffs. But yeah, that would be definitely enough. It's kind of sad too that we lost like the tiebreaker. I think to TSM. Yeah, TSM did pull it out in the end, and that, of course, your 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 buddy OP Sam coming on to join that. You yeah, know, Vul um, Vulcan know was kind of heavy load, well, but so, yeah, I know him very well. So if I would play, I'm not sure if he played for one v one, but I'm pretty sure I could have beat him in for one v one. So oh, some some heavy words. So now, so here's the big question. Yes, now that words. now that okay, we're putting on the chat right now, uh, just so everyone knows, <laughs> we have an official Toby Spirit Hawk saying that. He thinks you're going to take an OP <laughs> Sam. So here's the big question then. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm assuming that you'll be in CRL Season 2. I'm assuming that Sam will end up somewhere in CRL Season 2. Do you think the two yeah. of you end up on the same team? Um, I'm not sure about that, but it could happen. Um, well, if it doesn't happen and you guys don't end up playing each other in CRL Season 2, I'll make sure that matchup happens. I actually, this is the second OP Sam matchup that I have to make happen. Um, and I have the contacts, we just haven't done it yet. I'm going to have you versus OP Sam, and I'm also going to have OP Sam against Expo Master. The two mad scientists uh, against each other is going to have to happen as well. Yes, <laughs> sounds great. I would definitely love to play like against Expo Master too. 
Oh yeah, we'll definitely have to make if that he, happen. If well. he's down, I, yeah, I know him pretty well too. But perhaps if he, if we don't play like on the same team or we don't match each other, p perhaps at the world finals. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Well, let's get one more game in. Yeah. Um, end on some. We'll go. I let's mean, let's keep it going. I'm gonna go assume place what's up. Oh yeah, let's go all the way. Let's go to the top. Yeah, I could, I have time. I could play like for one or two more. Two more hours. I'm not sure about you. I have I have about twenty minutes. Uh, okay, yeah. But let's, let's see how many like let's the... see how many wins we can get. And so yeah. Okay, so Golem. So what's your obviously with the with the shift in three musketeers? This matchup has changed a little bit up against Golem Night Witch. What's your thought on on how you're gonna play this matchup? I think I'm playing pretty aggressive now and hope he doesn't have arrows. arrows. <laughs> yep. Um. Okay. All right, Golem Arrows Clone Rage. Yep, that will be very interesting. Okay, Golem Arrows yeah, Clone I I Rage. If I don't get free count here, I definitely win. If you don't get free crown in this moment, you win. Fuck! Okay. He has arrows. He has arrows. He has arrows. Does he know he have arrow? He has arrows. Will he remember he has arrows? Yes, he has arrows. Oh, I'm sure. Okay, moving in tight on the left hand side here, and he held off. Oh, he has arrows. Mirror. Oh my god. Oh. Oh what? Oh. I mean, you couldn't have a more perfect non-meta Monday moment than an oh. arrows mirror. Please tell me that that's his ladder deck. Please tell me that's his ladder deck. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's at 4,200. Oh my gosh. Please let me see what that was. Oh, I'm <laughs> she. <laughs> like one less spear goblin hit. Perhaps I should have played the three musketeers before the tower, but since they would have died, yeah. you are they not sure. I mean, I think you would have won that if he didn't have mirror, actually. Yes. That's yes, so Mirror crazy. Clone Rage. Mirror Clone Rage Arrow Spore Spells. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> let's just do the next game. Let's, yeah. let, let's forget it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at least we're having fun. I feel like that's, a fun, that's the fun thing about not only playing the global tournament, but playing the global tournament with these fun, these weird game modes is... Yeah. You know, for you, you're used to playing ladder at the top of the ladder where most of the meta makes some sense. But now you're yeah. experiencing what it's like to be a 4K player. <coughs> yeah. Like always, normally, I get like 2, 10, 20 wins without a lose pretty fast, like with a good meta deck. But like playing like a little bit off meta and I'm getting really weird matchups since I'm playing really weird decks. It's definitely at least funny. All yeah. right. So... As you can see, the, yeah. I guess the most important question of the day, is Ram Rider OP? Yeah, yes, for sure. It's definitely like one of the stronger cards, in my opinion. I like the card pretty much because it's a new card. It has like many cool um, mechanics, but it's definitely too strong right now. So you saw him go P.E.K.K.A. opposite lane and you're like, let's go hard on the left-hand side. Yep, but he defended very good. He had Fire Spirits Ibis, so pretty good defense from him. And he plays Ram right, okay. Play Barb slow and try to heal this. Okay, okay. Okay, put your. Okay, I was gonna say you're fairly healthy, but they came out of there with a little bit of trouble. But those yeah. fire spirits are not gonna Evis stop predict. that battle ram. Evis predict, yes, Evis predict. Heal. And that's gonna be a lot of damage here. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be towered down. I think on the right hand side. Yeah, two. I will trust pump up. Hi to Blaze. You <clears throat> joined in the chat here. We were just mentioning him earlier. Yeah, what's up, Blaze? What's up? What's up? Is he going to be in CL season two? I don't know for sure. I have not spoken to him in depth on that, but okay, okay. definitely one of those players who you know was under sixteen um, for CRL season one, but. You know, there's no player that I've seen in North America who kind of worked harder to be to be seen in this last year. You know, going to yeah, every single sure. event he could go and make sure everyone saw that he could play. Yep. 
All right, so that's, I mean, this is a pretty nice position for you. Battle Ram in the pocket. This is a, a pretty nasty GG. Um, you know, the, the one, the, the card that I thought was most interesting here was the Fire Spirits. I consider the Fire Spirits to be a highly underrated card. Uh, what are, I mean, where, what do you think of them? And what are some of your big underrated cards in the game? Um, that's hard to say because, as you said, like earlier, so many cards and decks are viable right now, and I'm playing like many of meta decks. So, in my perspective, it's hard to say what is like underrated because I play many different decks who perhaps people think they're underrated. But yeah, I could say like in my opinion, heal heal is definitely underrated in my opinion, heal for sure. Like, Snowball is very popular right now in the competitive scene, but it's still underrated, like, for, like, casual people. Hmm. I think, like, Sparky is very strong. Royal Hawks are very strong. W what is underrated, too? Um, like, Fire Spirits as well. Fire Spirits are pretty good. Skeleton Barrel is pretty good in some bait decks in my opinion as well royal recruits available in two versus two or in one v one with fireball bait decks or royal hawks hmm it's a lot of possibilities well let's get in there let's, let's try to rack up a few more yeah. wins before we uh before we wrap up yeah today. let's keep going and uh see i so bad okay you already got some offers or you you want to get in so if you guys didn't hear that that was uh Toby was asking Blaze, because he'll be seeing the chat here, if Blaze has some offers, says he wants it real bad. Uh, okay, opening minor, not in the safe spot. Interesting move. Okay, I will risk it. He played Fissa, let's see. Okay. Okay, so minor giant skeleton. And that was back yep. to minor fairly quickly. But again, <clears throat> you, yep. you know, you forget for a second that it's a double elixir tournament. Yeah, for sure. So first pump now that the miner's out. Okay, so going all in in that lane. That's gonna be a little frustrating to deal with. So Whoa. He, wow. Wow. Mistake by me. Uh, it's not looking too good, but I think I can come back. Yeah, this is a, I mean, it's almost like, what's the worst part of this deck here? The wizard is really frustrating with all the splash damage. Um, mm. You know, the... I think the giant skeleton, to be honest. Yeah, I was about to say, the giant skeleton, and that's a card that's seen a big change. It was almost laughable to play giant skeleton in 1v1 um, last yeah. season, and then suddenly now... Kind of seen a lot of giant skeleton decks lately. Yeah, he defended so well. Well, giant skeleton again. And you know your best response to the giant skeleton kind of struggles because he's got that wizard. Yeah. Okay, he wears his Tesla. Huh? All right, so going in hard with the battle ram. And there you go. Nice prediction snowball. The ram should get a connection. So that should be the tower down on the right-hand side. Uh, who do you think yes, has the advantage at this stage go. now? <coughs> let's go. Let's do this. And that pulled him back nicely. No, I, and now you're going to go you battle ram left-hand lane? Yep. Yeah. No, offer said, okay, okay. Yeah, I think the main offers will come for you, like, if you get, like, 20 wins, I definitely expect it. And if you do, like, good info online qualifiers. I think you definitely will get some offers after it. Just to get, like, the 20 wins really fast and do pretty good in the, in the combine, kind of. Yeah, well, uh, you can expect that I will not be playing especially because i me getting 20 wins would be f unbelievable all right here we go so now hard on the tower 
And uh, looks like he knows it's over, so he's letting this one go down. Nice yeah, three crown piece. win. And that looked that was looking kind of dicey there for a minute. Yeah, but what I definitely think like North American players or like even players who live like close to the studios, like in Los Angeles, have like a definitely like a big advantage to get picked up. Oh sure, because teams not wanting to spend the the uh, the extra money and stuff like that. So, although there's yeah, the hard part about. You save so so much money to be honest. You save like money for the visa. You save like money for the fly and fly back. You save money like perhaps like some people even I know like poor soon lift part uh, lift um, lift a little bit at home too. So yeah, you definitely save like a little bit money. For sure. Well, let's get back in there, man. We got a few more minutes. Let's kind of rack up a couple more wins. Yep. Let's get it, man. Let's get it. So, yeah, on non-meta Mondays, it's all about non-meta decks. I often will let viewers uh, suggest decks for me. And, of course, I do not do anywhere near as well. Um, yep. I heard, like, Sartre is in non-meta Mondays too, right? Say who? Um, I can't pronounce the name correctly, sorry. Um, the player who was on Complexity. Oh, Chachi. Yeah, Chachi, yeah. Chachi, yeah, sorry. well, non-meta Musketeers, is, and that's the oh, logo geez. you see on the right side of my screen. Uh, uh, I'm, uh, well, Pekka, Rage, Sparky. Oh. Okay, I, I think, yeah, I think it's going to be a lose. Yes, Wizard Air Horse. I need to focus. I need to focus, man. All right. So I'll just go ahead and cast while you focus. Pekka yeah. in front of the Sparky on the left-hand side, trying to find some way, and has to use the Barbarians. And then, of course, not wanting to see that, a Wizard behind. So uh, doing everything he can to keep the Sparky off tower, but with so much support around it, that Sparky is going to get another shot off. And that's two big, I heavy hitters. I think that's game. I think that's game. I have no reset, and he just spams. Oh, yep. Well played to him. Or, wow, I'm still alive. Still alive somehow. Um, any way to deal with this Pekka? But arrows. But arrows. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> like, too many people at the early stages play like arrows. That's a big problem. Yeah, I ran arrows in my, in my uh, comfort deck for a long time. Um, mostly yeah, because so there I, was so much money. Perhaps I should have changed the deck up before and thought about it. That so many people playing arrows perhaps put like bats in for a quicker, quicker cycle and it's a negative trade to arrows then. But anyways, GG's. Okay, it connects. <laughs> Let's okay, steal so... it. Uh, it doesn't help. The packer gets to it. Could <laughs> he make looking... a huge mistake? Could this no, be... No. I, I think I messed up even. Or? Oh, yeah. and all three of them go down. Yeah. Oh, that was rough. Yeah, I and messed up, but still, it was GG's anyways. Okay. This is... We are seeing some fun decks, though, that's for sure. Some... Yeah, for sure. Like, Packer, Like, alone for matchup. Packer, Rocket... Rage, Wizard, Electro... Oh, OMG. GG is to him. Well, let's get that one uh, back, man. There we go. Yeah, yeah see, no, wasting no time jumping right back in. Yeah, for sure. Okay, let's see what he's playing. Okay, Tombstone. Tombstone probably means, like, Lava Hound right now. That's at least good. Oh, oh no, Lava Hound. Oh, Wizard. <laughs> Wizard, wizard, wizard. How fascinating. Wizard bats. Okay, Pekka wizard. Hopefully no arrows. Almost the same deck. Just no sparky, no arrows. And there's the arrows. No! Oh, one shot off. Yeah, and Fibis in Rage. And okay. Rage. No luck, no luck. 
Not gonna lie, I think matchmaking is a little bit rigged right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tr- well, let's, let's let Toby try to concentrate here for a second. Pekka yeah. picks up the two musketeers right at the bridge, and those arrows should come out there in just a second. Yes, they do. So very frustrating that every time trying to pick up that Pekka, uh, those arrows are going to be there. Nice double kite there, taking the Pekka off a little bit and then back the other direction with the Barbarians now going in heavy, hard at the at the bridge, but Tombstone picks up the Battle Ram and this double Wiz deck, the the classic Wizard and the E Wiz, kind of a nasty combination when you combine in the Zap and the Arrow. So many responses for the swarm coming out from Toby Spearhawk. Three Musketeers split in the back, and that's got to feel good a little bit right now with those uh, two Musketeers going right, and the arrows being used early. So arrows out of cycle. Expect Toby to drop. There you go. The the, the minion horde on the left hand side to deal with uh, to deal with that Pekka, and that wizard should get eaten up as well by the Musketeer. And you see a connection on the right hand side. So this is actually really good for Toby Spearhog. Right hand tower is going to go down. Left hand tower is in a lot of trouble as well. And it all comes down to using those arrows too early on those three Musketeers. This might be a three crown. What looked like a lot of trouble for Toby suddenly turns into an advantage and it all came down to one big error. Playing those arrows on the right hand side, that's three crowns. Good game, good night. Toby Spirit Hawk with a big time win. For sure. I'm not sure why he effort for Musketeers. Perhaps to cycle, but OMG. But I mean hundred percent that was that that was the game right there, it was when he arrowed. Yeah, for sure. Okay, I'm in for next one. Let's keep it going as long as you have time. Let's do it. Yeah, I've got about 10 more minutes. Okay, fine. Okay, Ram Rider. Ram Rider in the back, followed up. So quick eight elixir spent right out the gate and a predicting fi- a fireball. But, you know, that fireball not quite as useful in that situation, followed up by a zap. So now that's going to be tower down on the left-hand wow. side here. He got for he got for tower down, but I have a pump and he doesn't have fireball right now. Let's see. Oh no, he has witch. All right, so the snowball does enough to get that st- stop that Sparky. So now we're going hard left hand lane. Uh, plenty of elixir though to defend here from Valeska. And mini Pekka is a very frustrating card to be encountering in this stage as well. Second pump down. So he chooses to fireball the right hand su- the right hand pump, which is almost down. Very interesting decision. Talking about the fireball or the sparky? Um, for fireball. I guess maybe he's feeling pretty confident with uh, having zap and fire spirits. That is one nice thing about Fire Spirits, is if you know how to play them correctly, they do present some fairly good counters to both the uh, the Barbarians and, more importantly, the Minion Horde. Yeah. So, being fast and loose with these Fireballs here, maybe feeling confident that he's up one, really not wanting those pumps to be active. Uh, Toby choosing to throw two Musketeers to the left-hand side away from the Sparky. And with no fireball on cycle, easy choice. But that's gonna be those, and that's two, uh, two elixir to go uh, take out five with those fire spirits. So that's why he's feeling so confident. Does not have fireball ready though, so that might be tower down right hand side. Those barbarians will escape enough. So tower down right hand side, and that's two really healthy musketeers and a barbarian on the left hand tower. So using those fireballs, now starting to come back and bite them. It is the fire spirits, though, still doing a good job. A nice counter to the minion horde. You know, maybe people, maybe this is a nice prediction from Valeska that people will be running minion horde more by including the fire spirits in this deck. So fireball zap, left-hand side, trying to make room for this witch. And in comes the ram rider. So, and followed up by the fire spirits, will not do quite enough to clean up those barbarians. And now a healthy musketeer in the pocket. Nice job. The the uh, Minipeka does not pick up the the battle ram. A couple of shots on the left hand side right now. Toby ahead, but not out of the woods quite yet. Has to deal with a mini Pekka and a very healthy set of minions on the left hand side. 
So I want to distract this Sparky before it gets a shot off on those Musketeers. And the Giant Snowball with the Minion Horde does its job. So two Musketeers, very healthy left-hand side, one on the right-hand side, choosing to go towards the King Tower rather than the Princess Tower with this Battle Ram, picking up the Mini P.E.K.K.A. with an Ice Golem. A lot of tower damage here on the right hand uh, uh, for Toby. 222 left in the game. And Nasty just goes all in with the three Musketeers in the pocket and the heel. Doesn't quite steal the entire victory. Um, kind, of go, kind of going with a big show-off move here. The question is, will that be troublesome? I guess in Double Elixir, you can recover from a move like that. All he needs now is a little bit of a connection. Even if the Battle Ram doesn't connect all the way, uh, if he can get just those Barbarians away to get a shot off. So Battle Ram in the pocket. Here we go. Will it connect? Doesn't quite connect. Trying to put a heel down there. Can they get past that Ram Rider? Just kind of spamming now all the way inside. Can the Ice Golem get to tower? And the Ice Golem explosion. Nice. The very Jeez. rare Ice Golem explosion finish. That was fantastic. Yeah. Nine free. Not too bad. Not, Not too, bad. too bad at all. Um, so we have time for one more if you want to go ahead and get one more in or we can call it there on a nice yeah, fun win. Let's do one more. Let's get like, let's get 10 wins. Come on. Let's do one more. Okay, let's see. I have... Okay. I just cycle ice cream and pump up. Okay. 2.9. Okay, but same mirror in my opinion. He goes aggressive and f fireballs. You already talked about that. So yeah, fireball, a little over aggressive there. He has a pretty quick cycle, so I need to be safe. Yeah. So this is an interesting non-meta Monday because a totally non-meta deck up against a deck that is at the center of the meta right now. Some people say it's uh, you know probably a solid tier two deck right now, maybe a tier one deck in the in the proper hands. But lots of answers in double elixir. There's pretty much always going to be something for Toby to drop to try to pick up that expo. But there's the problem right there. You can see it uh when the battle ram goes down the expo does get a lock it does not pick up on those barbarians so and another expo at the bridge so toby just trying to make sure that expo does not get more locks we have not seen the tesla yet we have to assume tesla's that final card there we go so tesla does come out to pro to protect a little bit so barbarians opposite lane and this is what toby was talking about earlier was just trying to find ways to keep that expo off tower and focus it in the opposite side so, does not quite get the Battle Ram connection. This Expo will not get a Tower Lock, though. So, splitting the Barbarians, and that's nice. You'll see those two extra Barbarians in the far lane. The Expo oh, will pick those up. So aggressive. Yeah, he's being... He's, I mean, he's cycling really, really hard, really, really fast. It works. Couple of nice shots, but again, Whoa. this expo gets tower lock, and it's just it's that battle ram. Yeah. Oh, well, I think it's two cheese. Yeah, you can definitely take that left hand side. So is he just gonna go ahead and so yeah, he's just gonna go ahead and turtle up now and play defense. Yeah. And you have no real way to punish here. Not really. Yeah, he's playing very good. He played overall very good. Jeez, I can do nothing. <laughs> Even if I get money, but now, yeah, Jeez, I played. Well, let's, it's a... <laughs> Yeah, let's recap a little bit. I think he played very, very good. And, like, he has so fast cycle. He has such a fast cycle. And I didn't have the best start, so, yeah, Jeez to him. Definitely. Yeah. Well, uh, it's fine. A, a, a rough way to end it, but we saw some pretty, yeah. pretty, some pretty fun wins. Uh, yeah, for you sure. Know, and that was an interesting note, like a totally off meta deck up against a deck that's right in the center of the meta, and he played it very aggressive, but yeah. the kind of aggressive you can play in a double elixir stand situation.
yeah, for sure he played very good and it was definitely a lot of fun. In my opinion, I like, to be honest, I like playing like against some counter decks because still if they're not the best players, but you, if you win against a counter, you, you, or if you play a lot against counter decks, you, you are ready to face them like in serious comp competitions too and you practice, you know. Still, if you lose, you always can learn something a little bit. Well, we definitely learned a lot today. You got a lot of great insight. Yeah. Um, Toby, when pe if people want to follow you or find you, where can they go? Um, you guys can find me like on almost everything. I have Twitter, I have Instagram, I have YouTube, I have Twitch. I'm pretty active on Twitch. I'm streaming like almost every day right now. Yeah. Until like CL starts or until I am moving out. And then I'll probably stream like two or two, three days. I'm not too active on YouTube, but the 20 events challenge challenge comes soon, very soon. So we're creating like two, three videos on it to help you guys, but in German probably. Uh, my most content on YouTube and Twitch is German. So yeah, if you guys are German, definitely check me out and you guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Toby Spiro Talk. Yeah, Excellent. not too much. And, and how do we do today? Do we go, um, what do we go, like nine, three and one? Um, nine, four, and one. Nine, nine four, four, and four. one. Yeah. yeah. So for, for playing this deck, not too bad. I bet you uh, you can avoid that last deck now that you switch to something a little bit more standard for the next for the next uh, few wins. Yeah, for sure. I definitely will try to get like 12 wins on that account. Just rewards. And yeah, probably just, chase them. Just for the rewards. Well, excellent. Thank you very much, dude. Uh, really appreciate having you on. That's going to be it for today. Guys, if you enjoyed this, I'll make sure to link all of Toby's stuff in the show notes for this upload when it goes to YouTube. Uh, go ahead, and it's this side. Go ahead and follow me there and look at the next video here. Uh, you guys will see that on the back end. Uh, I'm Rich Slayton. Thanks a lot, and I will see you on Thursday for the, uh, for the Slayton Showdown 6 in... What's the game called? Brawl Stars. Brawl Stars. <laughs> Slayton Showdown yeah. 6 and Brawl Stars on Thursday at 2 p.m. See you then, and thanks again, Toby. Peace out.